Borida Ichi Gid uh, Dioch Am Thord. It's my pleasure at the start of 2018 to be here with you uh, this morning. I've invited you here today to begin the discussion as to how we can create a democratic and empowered Wales. I want people throughout this country to consider how we can lift our country up by taking responsibility <coughs> for our own affairs and our own lives, how we can start a debate in Wales about ending our dependence on others. Let's all think about solving our own problems and meeting our own challenges, be they national or at the community level. This is more a lecture than a speech because I want the focus to be on political values. It's not a rallying cry to drum up the party faithful before an election. There'll be plenty of time for that in the next few years, I'm sure. I've not come here with a set of crafted messages for the media or to G up you, the audience <coughs> in the hall. Neither is this an abstract, theoretical, academic exercise disconnected from the real world. Instead, I want to introduce a set of practical, concrete ideas which I hope will go much further than this room or the confines of Cardiff Bay. I want to explore with people throughout this country how politics can become connected to people again, how we can extend our democracy. I want to see how many people we can sign up to the prospectus that decisions about Wales should be made in Wales. In my speech to the Play Cymru Conference a few months ago, the highest attended conference we've had so far, I pledged to undertake a full tour <coughs> of community engagement meetings across the country. So here we are. The aim is to reconnect our politics to values and principles, to increase support for decisions about Wales being made in Wales, and to hold a two-way meaningful conversation about the need for political change and what that change could look like. Today begins a process where people in communities everywhere will be asked to be given to give their views on the ideas, principles and values that can form the basis of the alternative. I want to speak to people who care about Welsh democracy, who care about elections and voting, who care about society, but who might be disconnected from Welsh politics or what happens here in Cardiff Bay. The tour will be accompanied and underpinned by a, a publication which I'm launching today and that's going to be available free online or a hard copy will be available after I finish speaking for a suggested donation of £5 which will contribute towards our campaigning costs. Before I start. <laughs> <laughs> after I introduce the main themes, I urge you to read that publication for yourselves, to share it with others to engage in the debate. In the document, I've analysed the various challenges facing our country, challenges from within the UK, challenges that, that arise following the Brexit vote, not least the risk of an extreme Tory Brexit and what that risk poses to Welsh jobs and services, as well as the challenges we face from global developments. I propose some responses to those challenges. I want to be clear from the outset what this document is not. It's not an election manifesto. It's not a wish list. There are suggestions for party activists and supporters of things that they can do to help bring about the change that we need. But I want the ideas in this publication to extend way beyond our party's confines to begin a national conversation, including everyone, about our nation's future. A central theme is empowerment. It advocates people here empowering ourselves to end our economic dependence on the Westminster government. Self-determination means that we should choose which powers we want to share with other countries or with Europe. I've drawn from movements and themes from elsewhere in the world as well as looking to our roots and to our own political history, practice and thinking. 
Decentralism is an important principle to Plaid Cymru. Power should be distributed to people not centralised by the state, be it the British state or the government in Wales. Neither centralising London-focused labour nor the regressive, divisive right have policies which are specifically designed to solve Welsh problems like Plaid Cymru has. To analyse and understand where we are and why we are where we are, we have to begin with de-industrialisation. The fires of industry forged many of my political views, but it is the retreat of industry, the doubting of those fires, that has defined so many parts of this country. The question, what happens next, was hardly ever asked, let alone answered. We still have clusters of high quality manufacturing, of course, but only where there is specialist or niche excellence, and almost always in a way that is linked to the European single market. Before devolution began, our economy entered a slump, which saw parts of Wales become the poorest and least productive in Western Europe. Welsh governments under devolution were at first unable to fix this. They then later became caught up trying to respond to the global financial crisis. In the most recent years, the main economic strategy has been dominated by aiming to attract inward investment using public money to hope that Westminster governments build prisons here or to pin our hopes on city regions or <coughs> enterprise zones which don't seem to have any real initiatives. At the same time, uh, rates of startups, enterprise and business births are stagnant. In those fields where Westminster has a major influence over the Welsh economy, outcomes are just as bad. Let's take rail infrastructure. I've sat in negotiations in London where both Labour and Conservative politicians called for rail infrastructure to remain the responsibility of the UK government. This shows how our interests can never be a priority to them. Letting the country next door control your rail infrastructure is a unique experiment and it's failed. According to information supplied to the Welsh Government in recent years, we have received just 1% of rail investment, <coughs> despite having 5% of the UK's population and 6% of the UK's rail routes. Our outdated infrastructure serves as a perfect reminder of where we have ended up, lagging behind on speed, less dynamic, more old-fashioned and more damaging to the environment. <coughs> It's no surprise that wages here are lower than elsewhere. Economic stagnation has gone hand in hand with weak, underdeveloped, underfunded public services working against the efforts of those at the front line. I know that wherever I go on this tour, people will raise with me the problems that they have in, ha in housing, homelessness, the lack of capacity within the Welsh NHS. Austerity measures, cuts have compounded these problems. <coughs> disappearing public amenities have turned once thriving communities into ghost towns where nothing happens, where young people leave. I am of the view that we saw some of the results of this desperation in the Brexit vote. Areas with limited prosperity, places with few large employers or communities without a university or a strong Welsh-speaking identity were all areas most likely to vote leave. In many cases, those who come to live here from other countries were blamed and given as a reason to vote leave. My contention is that the wrong people have been and continue to be blamed for our economic woes. And while the leave vote may well have been an expression of what can change and that must be heard and acted upon, I want to make sure that it's done in a way that avoids and challenges the scapegoating of migrants and by ensuring that everyone is treated with respect. There deserves to be an honest debate about the impact of migration, about both those who come to live here and those who leave. Migration patterns have real implica implications for the provision of public services and the demographics of Wales with an ageing population must de be debated with honesty and clarity not hype, sensationalism and false statistics. Working age people of whatever national origin 
are a net benefit to our economy, to our NHS, to our public services. In short, Wales needs more taxpayers. And those who do come to live here deserve, to be, deserve not to be scapegoated, deserve to be treated with respect, and they do not deserve to be treated with hostility or made subject to hate crime. This message has to date not been carried with sufficient weight into Welsh political debate, where we have allowed a tabloid media agenda about migration to be accepted as truth, years before the invention of terms like fake news. The links between lower immigration and ageing population and the future of our NHS and social care are yet to be properly made. Now it's too late to go back and win the argument over immigration to change the 2016 referendum result. But it is an argument that remains <coughs> critical to ensuring that there is support in Wales for staying in the single market and the customs union. <coughs> Whatever happens with Brexit, it's vital that we strengthen our ability to do more for ourselves. Our country's devolved assembly and government are seen by many as being unable to deliver any serious or substantial change. The perception is that little difference can be made to the hardships that people face. Our government cannot deliver the change Wales needs. This is made worse by a widespread spread lack of knowledge about the devolution settlement, a watered down version of that that has been granted to Scotland and the north of Ireland. When asked, people in Wales say that they would not vote to abolish the Assembly. But they also state in most polls that devolved governments have not made a positive difference to their treasured public services. The problem facing devolution and Welsh democracy is not hostility nor opposition. It's apathy and indifference. In some of the most <coughs> recent polls from within the last two years, a third of people, a third of people in Wales do not realise that health, the largest department in the national budget, is devolved. Almost half of people don't realise that education is devolved. And stunningly, in 2016, only 19.6% of people knew that for the previous four years, the, the Welsh Government had been run by Labour. Plaid Cymru has a raft of proposals to try and reduce this knowledge deficit, <coughs> such as political and citizenship education, creating an independent media commission, and the devolution of broadcasting. These changes all require a change of Welsh Government, as well as structural <coughs> changes in UK media outlets from whom most people uh, consume their news. In the 2017 election, the two largest parties gained a bigger combined share of the votes than they previously had in decades. Yet neither an intensification of neoliberalism nor the resurrection of British state socialism will provide the solutions that are needed to solve our economic challenges and turn around Wales. Both visions offered by the two largest Westminster parties marginalise our specific needs as a nation. Labour's brand of socialism doesn't empower people. Neither does it leave any space for Wales to behave as a nation and to control our own resources. And it's only through face-to-face -face and town hall conversations can we present our alternative to this binary choice of Labour or Conservative. We need to get out there and show people how the core weakness of Labour's paternalistic, centralising socialism is its democratic deficit. It'll neither enable people to own their own resources nor run them democratically. It won't empower people because it doesn't trust people. The decentralist socialism of Plaid Cymru is the opposite to the top-down, undemocratic model which has been embraced historically by British Labour. Decentralist socialism has been one of the core aims in the constitution of this party since the 1980s, following the failure of the centralising policies of Labour during the 1970s, which led to the election of Margaret Thatcher in 1979. 
Decentralism means devolving power to the lowest possible level in a deliberate and concerted pull away from the centre. Power naturally centralises. Decentralism means that the good of people and the community, the collective good, should be placed above the interests of money, corporate and government power. Decentralist socialism should be a democratic exercise in stripping both political and economic power away from the multinational corporations and the centralised state, bringing control back to the community through shared ownership and local democracy. It's not a rigid ideology, but one that evolves through deciding common goals. So what should this mean to people today when put in real and practical terms? We need a full national programme which is ambitious and transformational as a marked alternative to what we're seeing from a lacklustre Welsh government which after almost 20 years has run out of ideas and ambition. Power needs to be devolved within Wales itself. We must not recreate the unbalanced relationship between the core and the periphery that has been socially disastrous for Wales within the British state. This means that when new institutions are created, we should look at the west, the north, the former industrial areas, the mid of Wales. We should, be, look, we should look at taking new and existing institutions away from where they're concentrated already, as Plaid Cymru has advocated for the new Transport Authority, Football Museum, National Development Bank and other bodies. It means strengthening Welsh as a community language through measures involving local government and public sector jobs. It means ensuring that those parts of Cardiff, as well as our former industrialised areas, which are amongst the poorest parts of this country, can benefit from a sustainable regional approach to economic development. This is about levelling up and treating geographic inequality as a problem to be tackled in the same way as other inequalities. For my party, it means we will legislate to ensure that legal safeguards are in place to share public investment fairly right across the country, making sure that no community is left behind. Devolution, the decentralisation of power, democracy and independence do not end at the national or assembly level. Improving our democracy must mean enable, enabling more participation from more people. Policy consultations must be made more accessible and shown to be meaningful. We have already begun the process of increasing participation and improving community engagement through an agreement with the Welsh Government for a pilot citizen involvement project on the Welsh budget. Further and extending the principle of the citizens' involvement in budget setting and polit political decision making, as well as providing information, knowledge, and education to enable full participation, should be a government priority and it will be for Plaid Cymru. I've drawn on a number of contemporary and historic figures to produce the set of ideas in this publication. They include Raymond Williams and his Decentralism and Politics of Place and Naomi Klein's LEAP programme, featured in her book, No Is Not Enough. Inspired by those approaches, I've outlined 10 draft values and principles that could lead us to what Raymond Williams calls real independence. We can and must lift the nation's confidence by behaving and acting with independence of mind. If we behave with an air or attitude as though our country and society is free already, then we can develop the mindset needed for greater resilience and self-sufficiency so that we can properly pay, play our part in tackling the big challenges which face us, challenges like climate change. We should aim for more resilience and self-sufficiency in the face of climate change, with people in Wales deciding how our natural resources are conserved or used. <coughs> Such an approach would start from the assumption that it is people in Wales who should decide. 
The rights of minority groups must be protected in all of this, as well as the rights of women and girls, especially during the process of leaving the European Union. <coughs> Women's and minority rights have come under fierce attack during the gro growth of the new politics and the rights ascendancy. More people involved in politics and decision making from those groups that are under attack is one way to counter the racist, misogynistic or trans bullying and sexual harassment that has recently come to the fore. So I implore anyone out there who fears that they can help me with this, who wants to get more involved in politics, please do get in touch. <coughs> we should consider too how Welsh language communities could be given specific rights as collective groups. I also want to see a minimum set of social rights for all, such as the right to lifelong learning, a decent home, a high standard of health care and a clean environment. Other principles here include using public money for public good, maximising people's participation in democracy, cooperating as individuals instead of competing with one another, and learning from our history to look forward with hope instead of looking backwards with nostalgia. We need a set of politics in this country that reprioritizes principles like valuing our elders and recognizing their knowledge that has been built up over a lifetime. And by ensuring that young people can be confident that they have a future as a Welsh citizen, that they will be equipped and supported to find meaningful and well-paid work an independent, fulfilled life which includes access to a home. These values and principles can be built upon and amended as we discuss the Wales we want to live in through town hall meetings and doorstep conversations. I've offered these ideas to get the conversation started. I began from the position that Plaid Cymru wants to see a democratic revolution. In this pamphlet I talk about creating a democratic economy and that means that people are not just treated as workers, consumers or receivers of social security but they have a chance to unleash their creativity. Now Plaid Cymru already has a detailed body of policies to enhance both economic and political democracy. These policies are informed uh, by our belief that there should be an equal right for everyone to have a, a basic economic opportunities to be able to provide for their own needs. Economic democracy includes good quality education to maximise personal development and good public health to maintain the ability to work. It also means providing a safety net for those who are not able to fully participate in work. According to the sociologist Michael Hechter, Wales's economy has developed as a typical colonial extractive economy like those you can see in Latin America, built to facilitate the easy expo export of valuable national resources. In his argument, Wales was not built for the benefit of the people who live here, and that is what we now have to change. Overcoming these structural disadvantages and building an internal infrastructure that works for and benefits Wales will take a generation of investment. The Westminster parties have no intention of helping us break our economic dependence. To rebuild our economy ourselves will require a strong community-based programme of economic and political regeneration where we free up our people's creativity and natural resources as well as a Connecting Wales infrastructure plan. We must rebalance and refocus on the real meaning of free enterprise. Free <coughs> enterprise should not be used as an excuse to reduce uh, regulation or taxes for the multinationals. It should be used instead to encourage an indigenous Welsh business sector, including both cooperatives and regular companies. We believe in a mixed economy of private, <coughs> public and mutual enterprise. We recognise the market and we believe it should serve the people, not just the interests of multinational capitalism. We believe in sharing economic opportunities amongst our citizens through a binding contract where profits generated in Wales 
will help to pay for social goods uh, that all of our people can benefit from. And Plaid Cymru will, uh, we understand that locally and nationally uh, rooted enterprises are more likely to stay in Wales and deliver social and economic benefits uh, to the country and to local suppliers. We cannot have a truly democratic economy until the number of Wales-based and Welsh-owned enterprises expands as a proportion of our economy. Underpinning this is the need for the creation of a home market of locally and nationally procured goods and products. We are not keeping hold of enough of the money that is generated already here in Wales. We can do so much more to make use of our national, linguistic and cultural identity that can then be used to support and market products to our own citizens as well as to people further afield. To create an economy fit for the future, we must also reform the planning system. The planning system was set up to protect the natural environment from overdevelopment, yet it now protects development, de developers' interests above the interests of the individual and the community. Most of the planning rules were created for an age of heavy industry that no longer exists. With technology changing so many aspects of the way that we live our lives, now is a good time to rethink the boundary between living and working space. I outline five steps Plaid Cymru will take to adapt the planning system. I want the planning system to enable the creation of mixed <coughs> zones for employment, where, for self-employment, sorry, where living and working spaces can be combined or co-located <coughs> to cut travel and overhead costs for startups and self-employed people. I also propose measures to incentivise the creation of low-impact housing and to create rural, bu rural business hubs with modern infrastructure. Education has to be thought of as part and parcel of the foundations for a strong and successful economy. We need to curb the emigration of our highly educated young people and do what we can to encourage the return of those who have chosen to work outside the country. Basic measures to incentivise and to encourage those in whom you have invested in from the public purse in terms of education should in no way be seen as nationalistic. It should be seen as normal. Modern countries develop strategies to retain talent, to keep their brightest and their best. If Wales had been able to keep hold of our talented people as well as our natural resources in the past, there's little doubt that now we'd be in a much more positive position. We must create the conditions to enable our young people to stay in Wales and thrive. We're squandering limited public money otherwise. One way to do that is by enabling and supporting young, young people to be self-employed, to be business creators, innovators, founders of social enterprises and mutuals. This starts not just with resources and spaces, but also with education. Plaid Cymru has already established policies for a mass apprenticeship programme and to cover the costs of tuition fees for those young people who live and work in Wales after they've graduated. These plans will be refreshed ahead of the next elections, but the outcome we want to be the same. We want to stop the so-called brain drain and to offer positive reasons for our youth to stay and help us build the nation. But these policies, both these policies together, will provide at the skills base and talent required to build our economy. They will also stop our young people from feeling that they're forced to leave their communities to find work. The Welsh tertiary education system should enable people to receive and engage with educational programmes from cradle to grave. By investing in tertiary education and aiming for the entire population to become educated to tertiary level, the government of the Basque country has given the majority of adults the opportunity to improve their job chances as well as empowering them to start their own enterprises. A comprehensive in-work education programme similar to that available in Denmark would also help to retrain and upskill those workers who are at risk from automation. This is an aspect of our future that needs much further debate than has taken place to date. 
the combination of making education more available on the one hand and making it fee free for those who continue to live and work in Wales on the other <coughs> will provide our communities, our citizens and the economy the boost that it needs. A core principle of decentralisation for us is that people in Wales are best placed to take decisions in the best interests of Wales. Decisions affecting Wales are best taken in Wales. If those decisions are taken outside of Wales, there's a risk that those decisions won't be in our best interests. Currently, too many decisions affecting Wales are taken in Westminster by people who have little knowledge or interest in Wales or the needs of the people who live here. We have to change that. And Irene Bevan said, this is my truth, tell me yours. These ideas are up for debate, for discussion, even for argument. We're at the start of a new year. I don't know about you, but I am more than keen for this year to be better than the last. I sense a real opportunity in the vacuum that has come about since the Brexit vote to reassess where we are and to chart a new course. We must overcome our present, where too many hopes are pinned on Westminster to deliver for us, to electrify our railways, to build a tidal lagoon, to get a non-disastrous Brexit outcome. Allowing <coughs> the country next door to decide so many vital aspects of our daily lives hasn't worked. It's part of our problem. This is not as good as it gets for Wales. We now stand at a crossroads between a future where Wales plays a peripheral role in an increasingly right-wing, centralised and reactionary British state, or one where we can develop our own democracy and economy from the bottom up. There needs to be a full and open debate with everyone involved and included about the kind of country that we want to live in. We face challenges, but there are also opportunities. The constitutional uncertainty means that we must question everything about our, economic, uh, about our economy, our infrastructure, and how our democracy is structured. We can't be afraid to develop ambitions that we don't yet have the powers or the finances to realise. But we must be single-minded in our efforts to obtain those powers and those finances to empower ourselves. I'm looking to our members, our supporters, and wider Welsh <coughs> society to contribute more policy ideas that fit with the broad principles and values outlined in this publication. It's hoped that all of this will be used to spark conversations in communities throughout the country to engage everyone who is interested in the future of Wales. Like Cymru members and activists, can be the community champions who help to realise this decentralist future through participating in and leading local action in community projects, as well as facilitating and contributing to our collective thinking, helping to promote and develop a detailed plan for a more democratic and inclusive Wales that works for all. We must be the change that we want to see, and by being engaged, at every level of politics, from community action, local conversations, to local councils, through to our national parliament. This is our Wales, and not only must we defend it, but we must also influence its growth into the inclusive, prosperous, democratic and just place that we all want it to be. Now is the time. I'm lying. <laughs>